Uh, folks, so this demo is about export environment utility in AWS CDK. I'm showing the serverless framework plugin for export environment. This is so convenient. You just install it and set it up easily. And then when you run the script export EMV, it takes your environment variables and outputs them to a .m file. I cannot do without this in, in serverless. But in CDK, you don't have something like this. So I thought about how it could be possible if, if you wanted to do such a thing. Uh, so here's the PR and I'll link everything at the end. But the main idea is you need to, and some of the comments are outdated here, but basically uh, there are a few steps. So the first step is when we deploy, as you know, after, after we finish our deployment, uh, we might, if, we if you're utilizing CFN outputs, at the end of the deployment, we will be given some values that we have identified in the CFN outputs. Effectively, we want these things in a .m file. Uh, you would think, yeah, this is CI, maybe I can grab these from there and just put it to an end file. It's not that easy. So the, the flow is, first, you need, uh, let's see, let's find these CFN outputs somewhere. I can show you, see the uh, outputs. So I do have it in a few places. For instance, I am outputting the API gateway URL here some DynamoDB table name over here. And I have two more things in the stack that are doing that. So the idea is first you have these CFN outputs, and then we need a way to reach out to the actual stack and call, uh, get some information about that. So we do that with this script. So it uses the cloud formation describe stacks it actually reaches out to the actual resource for either all stacks or the stack that you pass in. And after that, it has all the data in the outputs. Right? The, the trick is, though, to make it compliant, to make it working easily, whether you're in CI or you're locally. So in CI, you might get these values from the environment. And locally, you might get it uh, well, there are actually a few different ways, and I don't know if this is the latest, but this is a way to get that those credentials for your profile. Uh, after that, I have this convenience script, so you can run this locally, right? But I want it to be as easy as possible, and I didn't want to pass in uh, an argument when running it. So in order to satisfy that, one thing that we're doing here, and you might choose to do is, after uh, you have your application, you can, output the stack wave into a simple text file like this. And this is dynamic, it's getting node, it changes per temporary branch, so it gets the name of the temporary branch, or dev, because I have that kind of a logic with the node and value, and uh, that is one of the enablers of temporary stacks. So since I had that, I just output the value out there, and in turn, we can use that file in the script over here to get the stack name. And that's a real, Part of the magic is what this describes stacks. We get that out and we are saying, just output that value that we got into in, in a key value format into the .m file. So let's delete this. And we have a convenient script there. I like to call it export m any repo. And then we will output those there and then to the environment file. So this works exactly the same as export env in serverless. Uh, there's only one trick in CI that we need. And uh, perhaps I can show the bigger PR when showing this here. So in, in the YAML files, you'll see that we are running that script, but also we are setting, um, that we are actually going and uh, doing this writing to the file operation, uh, writing to the environment variables operation manually over here. So there's something additionally we have to do in CI just so that everything we get out of this is exported into the, the environment so that it can be used in the later steps. So previously I was 
doing a roundabout thing, getting the S3 bucket uh, website URL. So it's a lot of work as you see. So I could have gotten it as easily as this. Uh, there are also things I'm doing with the backend API uh, and I'm doing that programmatically. But if I wanted to, uh, this getting it through the export environments would be much easier. So I left the other ways in case that's not available to someone. So there's both ways of doing it. And uh, people, if they can export the environment variables, I think that's the preferred way. But otherwise, uh, you'll see in the code base uh, means to do this operation here programmatically and uh, run those before the Cypress tests or other scripts. Uh, but I, I do prefer this way. Uh, hopefully that's helps. So the main idea is you have some CFN outputs. You have your script that uses CFN describe stacks to get that information remotely. And then it just puts it into a data and file. You have to make slight modifications to your YAML files to be able to run that script uh, because you know, this is your script. And other than that, uh, exposing the things that you want to output to CFN output. So that's, that may be one thing you need to do. Um, but other than that, there isn't too many special things. I saw those CFN outputs and then the script is where it's at. Um, there's just, just this outputting the stack name in the bin file. Um, that, that was it. I mean, this is just so we can get this value easily without having to pass any arguments. There's just less work. That's a nice abstraction that you don't have to think about. The file is ignored anyway. Um, I will link to the repository and also put a description in the readme. Uh, let's merge the master now, rain. So you can uh, read a little more about it. And the same things I'm describing here will be described there. Uh, in CI, it works pretty well. So for instance, we deploy right in a temporary branch. And then we run the export environment, just like locally, you get those values out. And then those values are written to the CI environment. And then over, over uh, when you are testing the front end, I intentionally output two values. So one of them is coming from the export EMV. The other one's coming the uh, acquiring, is coming from the acquiring S3 bucket website URL. So we have both of them, but I'm using the export me yeah, one because I think that is just better and it can give you more things that you need. But uh, that's it guys. So let me know what you think and hopefully this helps somebody.